So what does an increase in total factor productivity do in this model? Well, this is going to turn out to be a little bit more complicated than the increase in government spending. And the reason is because higher productivity is going to shift up the production function. And that means that the marginal product of labor is going to be higher at any given level of employment. And that then is also going to drive up the wage. But of course, we then have multiple effects going on. We have that uh, higher productivity is going to shift the marginal product of labor out and therefore increase the demand for labor. But the higher wage is then going to trigger the substitution and income effects that we talked about before. So to remind you of those, a higher wage is going to increase the relative price of leisure. And that then induces substitution out of leisure and into consumption. That's the substitution effect. But a higher wage is also going to increase uh, the consumer's wage income. And that then induces them to want to consume more of both consumption and leisure. So as we studied before, the higher wage is going to have an unambiguously positive effect on consumption but the effect on leisure is going to be ambiguous. In these slides, on figure 12, we assume that the income effect is quite strong so that equilibrium employment falls. But remember that output is gonna rise unambiguously. So even if the uh, increase in total factor productivity reduces employment, the higher productivity is going to raise output. And the reason for that is because output depends directly on total factor productivity. Here's the picture that shows the shift from the blue to the red production function. And as you can see, at any given level of N of hours worked, we now are going to have something more steeply sloped and therefore the marginal product is going to be higher. Now we know that in equilibrium, the wage has to equal the marginal product of labor. And so the question becomes, well, what, what is going to drive the wage up? Well, we go to the labor market where we've got two different effects, remember. The first effect is that higher productivity is going to increase the marginal product and therefore it shifts the demand for labor out. If there were no change in the supply of labor, then we would unambiguously get a higher wage, which remember is what we're after over here. And we would also then in that case get higher employment. Now, if it turns out that the income effect is quite strong, then the supply of labor will shift back a lot. And the final outcome will be that that reinforces the increase in the wage. Just for your information, it turns out that economists have been asking precisely this question. What is the effect of higher Z on hours worked? And the theory, which is ambiguous, turns out to be pretty close to what we find in the data. Nobody quite knows what the effect is. Okay, so to wrap up, what we've done now is we've solved the macro model. Um, that means that we have that consumers are maximizing utility, firms are maximizing profits. We've cleared the labor and the goods markets. Those are the two markets that are operating in this model. And we have government policies that, although admittedly simple, are consistent with the government's budget constraint. So this solution then has expressed endogenous variables in terms of exogenous variables. And we've used that solution to show how changes in two of the exogenous variables, government spending and productivity, affect the endogenous variables within this model.